team. What a great team. Because once again, we recognize that it is such a privilege to bring others before the Lord in prayer. And also this month, it is Women's Month. And what wonderful, powerful messages we've received from all the men and women that have blessed us this morning. So we are thankful that God will do the same for us again this morning. We have a special speaker this morning. It is Pastor Michael Mforo. And today is Mission Monday. What mission has the Lord laid on your heart? What are you doing for the Lord today? I look forward to hearing the message today. Pastor Mforo, would you kindly unmute yourself and please go ahead and tell us what the Lord has laid on your heart. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Belinda. We are going to be having uh, uh, Elder Tsiri doing the devotion for us. Pastor Mforo has a challenge with his connection always. So I think he will be coming late, but in the interest of time, we always have someone on standby. Uh, Elder Tsiri will be doing the devotion. Thank you so kindly. Thank you very much, Elder, and thank you very much, Sister um, Belinda, for the opportunity to preach this morning. I would like to share with you, uh, first of all, a welcome in this uh, uh, garden of prayer where we will be talking about uh, mission this morning i was really blessed with the songs uh, this morning that telling us we are not ashamed of the gospel and in this fact even uh, the spirit is calling me about i will go will you be willing to go in this direction and as it is calling you to go, the title of the message of this morning is my life. Why am I here? Why am I here in this uh, uh, mission here? Why am I here on this earth here? And in this aspect, even the Bible text that we will be focusing this morning is in First Peter, um, chapter 3 and the verse 15. First Peter chapter 3 and the verse 15, which is a disturbing question. A disturbing question because it says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a, a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we do not dare to touch this question, this uh, thing that you would like us to understand. Why am I here? What is my mission? Unless we are asking you the reason for that. Help us to understand your word this morning. And whoever is connecting this morning, Lord, let it be not in vain and use me, an empty vessel, but use me mightily through your spirit, that whatever will be spoken this morning will be only for your glory and to uplift people, to join you in this marvelous uh, mission that you have called us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So the message that uh, we are going to look this morning is, why am I here? And what is the mission? The thing that he says on this uh, uh, verse, as you can see, is but sanctify. That is the first uh, verb that you need to understand first. Sanctify, as it is said. And then it says, always be ready. That is the second uh, uh, call that you are uh, being given this morning as well. The third one is, to everyone who is asking you a reason, have you been already asked, why do you believe in God? Today, God is calling you to be always ready. And the last one is when you are being asked, you need to have meekness and you need to have fear in all those things. So the disturbing questions that we would like to address this morning is, do you know why you are here? 
here in South Africa or in the country where you are listening to me right now, in the country where you are right now, at your current house or estate, in your current work right now, or even with us here in this virtual prayer, ever it is directly on Zoom or it is on uh, WhatsApp when somebody shared to you or on Telegram when somebody uh, shared it to you or even on Facebook, why are you here? Or even on YouTube, why are you here? That, those things of uh, disturbing questions, but let us try to understand them. And there is even something that you need to understand. Is it because of your qualification or your degree if you succeeded? Or is it because of a bad luck or a mistake that you come here and you failed and you came in this place right now? Is it because of your good or bad relation with someone that you came in this place right now? What is the reason that you came in this place? Is it because you did something good and bad? Or is it because the Lord, the living God of the universe, planned for you and exactly want you to be there here with us here. So the answer of this question is very important in this fact. When you have a problem, you know exactly whom to blame and to whom to go if you know the answer of that question. If you have chosen to be in that place because of yourself, then you can blame yourself. But if you know that God is the one who led you in that place right now, then you know that he has a mission for you, then if anything happens, you can blame and run to him. And that is exactly the reason we are calling whom to blame and whom to go to. Now, the thing that we need to understand in this aspect of the gospel and the mission is here. In Matthew 5 and verse 14. And here it is very clear. It says, you are the light of the world. No one lights a lamp and then put it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. Who is then this no one? Who is then that no one who is placing that lamp where it is. And you are the, that lamp, I am that lamp. So who is this no one? We need to understand that the light of the world is myself, yourself. And who is that lamp that is being talked here? It is myself as well. So when it speaks about that lamp, it says that, that no one puts you not under the basket. And it, it, it puts you, or that person is putting you in the place to stand. And it says that, well, that that person who is no one is the one that is putting you where you can light everyone. So who is this no one, if we need to understand it in this side? Here it says, you are the light of the world. So if we can understand it, then that no one is none other than God himself. So God will not light a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, he will put that lamp and God, a lamp is placed by God on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. Now then you understand why God put you in this place, in this corner. You understand now why you have been fired. You understand now why your landlord is so harsh to you. You can understand now why you have been moved from that place to where you are now. You understand now why you have been denied for that visa or that uh, permit that allows you to go to that country. Because God wants you to be a light where you are right now. And that is the main reason you need to understand and thank God because he is placing you in that place. The light of the world is yourself, as we said here. And you are the lamp. 
And God is putting you under that, never under a basket. He will never hide you where you should be. He will put you always and place you in the stand so that you can light the place where you are. This is a marvelous light. My brothers and sisters, whoever you are and wherever you are right now, God is the one who puts you where you are right now. And in this aspect, I would like to encourage you in this aspect, the very aspect. Yes, it is God who chose you, number one. He is the one who lighted you. He is the one who placed you where you are now. That is important. So who is the guilty whenever you have a problem? Here is the thing. So if God purposely puts you in this situation where you are now, who is blamed when you complain? Who is liable when you are idle? Who is glorified when you succeed? Do you know or do you do what you do because of God or for yourself? Those are questions that I want you to think for 15 seconds. Who is blamed when you complain? Who is liable when you are idle? Who is glorified when you succeed? And do you do what you do because of God or because of yourself? Life and faith of the mission with faith. Now faith is the substance of things up for the evidence of things not seen as Hebrew 11 verse 1 is telling us. So you hope it and that it is the evidence in that aspect. So life of the mission itself without faith is a light without oil. Life or your mission without faith is a light without oil. We need to understand this in that aspect. And James chapter 2, verse 17 as well says, faith of the motive of your life, of, of your mission by itself, if it does not have works or action, is dead. What is for sure then in this aspect? So faith is important for your life. And also it is dead without an action. So life, our mission without actions, just are dead, if we can understand it as well. Now, about prayers, you came here for a prayer reason, and you want to, be, to pray, but is prayer enough in our life? So it says here, faith without action is just dead. So life without prayers as well then is powerless, powerless, and it is also in vain. We need to be careful that if we pray, do not ask a prayer because you need to pray. Ask a prayer because you need to go for a mission. And God will provide whatever you need because you're ready for his mission. Think of a soldier who is going to fight and he's asking for, for guns. He's asking for any grenades and things. And then he's remaining at home. That person who is asking for a gun and grenade and remains at home is a dangerous person. He is not useful for the mission he has been called for. Instead, he is dangerous. And that is why we need to be careful. When you ask for something, God will only provide it to you when you are ready for it. And it says, for it is God who works in you both for the will which is your life, and to do it, which is the accomplishment of your mission for his good pleasure. So we need to understand that it is God who does it. He is the one who is working in it. So life without the spirit then, the spirit is the one that God is sending you to you to accomplish his will. The life of a mission without the spirit is pointless and even armful, as I told you, a soldier with a gun, with grenade and every equipment, heavy weapons that he has 
without the mission, but remaining at home is a dangerous person. So you need to be careful with this one. You need to understand his will, and then he will accomplish it here. Armful life, as I told you. How? It says, when we use the spirit and not letting the spirit using us, that is harmful. Do you use the spirit or are you used by the spirit? When we are stuck at home with our resources, we bury our talents and not putting them at risk, investing them for the mission. That is harmful as it is tell, told to us here. So be careful, my brothers and my sisters. It is an harmful life as well when we pray and focus in on our needs only and not on the needs of the mission. What kind of prayer do you always con and constantly asking God? Or is it for you or for the mission, as it is said? When we study the Bible to show off, to show off and to support our opinions, but not to listen to God's will and attempt, attempt to understand his vision and guidance. Why do you study the Bible? Is it for you? of the mission. Today, I would like you to listen to God's will. I want you to listen to his vision and guidance when he's asking you to study the Bible. So play to be like a fruitful tree. Play to be like a fruitful tree. Be like this tree in your life to transform the dirty CO2, which is the carbon into oxygen. I will go to transform the cursed people in my community into a heavenly blessings to make them another missionaries. Do not complain because people are brief and deaf surrounding you. Instead, convert that CO2, which is the, the carbon in itself, and convert it into a blessing to other people as an oxygen. That is the beauty of the tree. Be like this tree in your life as well to withstand the wind as it brings pollen from my fruits. Do not complain because of the wind blowing to your tree. Instead, thank God for that wind. Thank God for the attack of the enemy because those fruits, those winds, that wind that when it is blowing is sending those pollens to grain, to to. to to expand and, and, and make more in a longer places that uh, pollen so that you get more trees like you. I will go not to complain about the device anymore. More of people going in this place, whenever something is happening, we tend to speak about the divine more than God. And when we say something is happening, it said the device this, this, the device did that. And we tend to brag the divine instead of giving uh, glory to God. So I invite you today, please stop talking about the enemy. Start uh, uh, glorifying God and stop talking about the divine because he is more happy when you glorify him. Talk about God. Talk about the power of God. Our God is mightier than him. But to thank God for what the which grow your faith, your love, and your trust for him. And the last one that I say here, be like this tree, to continue being a beautiful furniture after they cut you. Maybe that you are going under a soul right now, but I will go not to complain about my persecution, even if they try to cut me, but rather to bring sense and changes and beauty again in the life of those who are against me. They try to cut you, but after they cut you, you can become a wonderful furniture in the life of that person. The very last thing is this, even if they burn you, you still bring warmth in that house of the life of the woodcutter. So I will go not using excuses to burn people, but rather to bring warmth against when this world become a, a cold world. So today, my call for you today is this, pray to listen to God. 
Pray to be transformed by God. Pray to match God's mind and pray to be used by God. You are a light and exactly where God wanted you to be. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, I am so sorry. We are so sorry because we tend to blame you always with the problems that are happening in our lives. Instead, Lord, help us to thank you because you placed us exactly where you want us to be. Even if we do not have money, we, do, we, are, we are broke, Lord. We are having challenges where we are. We thank you because you are giving us such issue so that we constantly depend upon you. Help us, Lord, as we go into our breaking out room. Instead of complaining, let us ask uh, uh, wisdom from you, courage and humility and increase of faith, Lord, so that we can be that light you have post, you have placed where we are in this day. Thank you so much, brother.